Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to sustainability and grant funding in the post-pandemic age. This webinar today is put on by Fair Grant Writing and Sustainable Resources Management. Our speakers this afternoon are going to be Igor Chagrin, Principal of Fair Grant Writing, and David Katz, President of Sustainable Resources Management. And with those quick introductions, we shall jump straight into it. And I will now hand off to David to lead off our presentations this afternoon. David. Well, thank you. Thank you, Igor. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, let's see if this works. So we have the um, slideshow. So I'm going to... Uh, discuss sustainability for businesses and have then Igor show you where the opportunities are for um, getting money to facilitate that. So the areas of sustainability that we're going to address here is, is about energy consumption, about operations, about waste, about pollution, about climate change. Um, and what we're looking for are in the post pandemic age, in light of climate change, we know that the uh, we're trying to build back better and they may be funds from utilities and from uh, uh, the federal government. Um, everyday executives have to make critical decisions that will impact operation shareholder brand reputation. It's imperative that they make these decisions with information. Um, Many businesses are adopting this sustainable development as a core business value. And um, in order to do that, they have to make tough trade-offs, but there are opportunities that are available to measure what we're doing and to uh, get some funding possibly that will facilitate that. So these are the operational and administrative and conditional areas that we address when we look at climate change, at sustainability as a business, and it's about measurement. How much greenhouse gases do you produce? How much do you buy from Toronto Hydro? How much do you use when you fly in a plane in Air Canada? All these things are called carbon footprints, and we're going to discuss the operational area because that's an area that I uh, have the capabilities of getting businesses funding to improve and also Igor to facilitate those grants and other things that are similar. You know, these are the four areas that we talk about when we talk about resource consumption. What are you using to make your product or to deliver your service? Do you generate waste? Is that waste harmful? I mean, we've polluted rivers by just thinking we can throw things from our plant into the water. Unfortunately, that isn't a very good idea. And then what resource consumption do you use? And there are tools like RedScreen, which is a renewable energy technology screening software, the free government, Intercan provides it, where you can evaluate your basic functions of what you're using energy now, and what if you improve by going renewable or getting a new motor or new light, some of the things that we discuss later. And as you see, if you can't manage it, you, if you don't, you can't manage what you don't measure. So information is key. Um, I just took this from LinkedIn yesterday on a job description for Coca-Cola, you know, one of the biggest consumer companies who are looking for a director of sustainability. I won't go into all the points in the job description, but you can see that basically it's covering being part of the whole company, conduct environmental scans, provide management with climate change issues. Coca-Cola is very concerned about water replenishment. In some countries that are, uh, you know, have droughts, they can't sell Coca-Cola unless they reclaim the water. And Pepsi is doing the same. Here's more uh, job descriptions where the sustainability officer has to prepare reports, has to do uh, cl climate change reporting. The whole supply chain now, with, if it's Walmart or Costco or whatever, they're going to ask their suppliers, what are you doing about sustainability? What is your carbon footprint on the product that you sold me? So these are just the job descriptions. Here is the company Siemens, which is in the energy business. And I just took this from their decarbonization webinar that I was on. 
And you could see that they're addressing all the areas of measurement first and then improvement and engaging, as you see, stakeholders, the supply chain, and then making a commitment over the whole period to decarbonize their activities and those of their customers. And Siemens is one of the major companies in the world that are working on energy side of the equation. So I'm gonna just briefly touch on energy consumption, auditing and benchmarking. Uh, clearly this is an area where it, businesses that are consuming energy can have savings and in many cases get utilities to provide them with incentives. Um, there are a wide range of incentives. Um, you know, these incentives are providing customers with an incentive to use less energy. And you sort of wonder why would a utility say, don't buy my energy? Well, utilities have limited capacity. The wires in, in Ontario or in Toronto are, are 50 years old. And as more and more demand for energy exists, there's limited capacity in both the transmission, distribution and generation. And so the utilities are told to offer their customers incentives to use less, but they still get a return on those investments. Enbridge doesn't lose money when it gives you money. It still gets a return. Um, maybe I'll ask Igor to mention some of the things that are applicable in this area. Uh, absolutely. So uh, in, in terms of the funding available, <clears throat> incentives available, for uh, you know, reduction of your uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, most of them are funded by the federal government with the carbon tax money that they collect, uh, but they uh, are actually administrated by your uh, favorite gas utility. Right? In this case, we're talking about mostly, uh, mostly use of gas as the uh, direct contributor to greenhouse gas uh emissions um, and uh, your favorite your your um not even your favorite your uh, probably the only utility gas utility in the area that you are dealing with uh, definitely has some of those programs and usually uh, it yeah, usually those programs uh, those incentives um, uh, provide you with some money for uh, things like furnace upgrade um, and uh, all type of uh, hvac all type, types of hvac systems upgrade uh, because uh, quite frankly, if, uh, uh, if, if your business is not about, uh, let's say, heat treatment or uh, active use of gas in, gas in an industrial process, uh, the majority of the gas that you are spending is to heat, uh, heat the premises uh, in the wintertime. And uh, purchasing uh, you know, advanced HVAC equipment, uh, control and monitoring systems that can optimize the use of the gas, so all of that uh, typically qualifies. Uh, yeah. for, for the, for the substance. Okay. I'm gonna, yeah, that's great. And so a lot of the electrical, including now process heating. So both the, in some companies like, uh, you know, Fortis, they have both gas and electric. Um, in mm -hmm. Ontario, you know, it's Enbridge. And in this case, the IESO, it used to be with each uh, local distribution company. But clearly there's electrical savings in these areas and, Generally, they're, they're incentives to take out something old and putting something new. Uh, Saveonenergy.ca is one for Ontario. And in each province, you'll usually find your utility able to present that. So uh, both electrical, as I'm showing here, and the gas and, and even the building envelope, which impacts both electric and, ga and gas heating, as uh, Igor just mentioned. So let me go on to also other things that are happening within the sustainability space, because here people talk about renewable energy. I mean, we're now talking about putting solar on roofs, uh, using uh, dynamic windows. So even if your business is, a, is an office or you have offices within your business, there are areas of improvement. And see, here are some of the things that are happening in smart buildings, in renewable energy, in the smart grid. Uh, you know, EV chargers that we'll mention later, you now can buy renewable energy credits as part of your sustainability challenge or opportunities. So that's one area. In addition, the grid and the whole energy system that we have, as you see here, this is from Ashbury, is now changing to a smart gas grid where we're now actually storing the renewable energy, turning it into hydrogen and putting it into the gas system and also with batteries and thermal storage and heat pumps. So all these things now can be applicable to your business. 
There are technologies that are available. They can replace the old fossil generation thing. And as you see, whether it's a hydrogen car, what we hear about electric transportation, et cetera, all these things are part of what your business can do in a sustainable area. Even when now we're talking about returning to work and indoor air quality, um, you know, we, th we have young workers, they want everything on their app. And so even your operations can improve in terms of automating things, uh, touchless things. So many of the post pandemic areas of improvement, especially in the real estate and the office space will be when we return to work, how do we social distance? What are the rules that are gonna still exist? And even after vaccination, as we see, we want less people to get flu, we want less people to be sick. And so we're seeing clearly that clean indoor air is critical and our company and others have technologies that help you improve that area. Now, the importance of analytics, if you don't, as they say, if you don't measure, you can't manage. So clearly when the pandemic and the return to work happens, uh, the real estate people are worrying about how to do space. Um, we only can manage this transformation is to measure everything. Turn that data into information, get that information, creation of a hybrid workplace. Uh, clearly people can be working from home and still being designing the next product instead of getting in their car. Now there are benefits to work together and clearly that's one of the adjustments we're gonna make just like we're having this Zoom call instead of all physically sitting in a meeting room. I'll just take these two quotes from the former Ontario uh, Environmental Commission report. Clearly energy efficiency fuels success. And whether it's manufacturing, whether it's business, whether it's services, all these improvements have, they go to the bottom line. When you lower your electricity or your gas cost or your water cost, and you still make the same product, you're improving the return on your investment. And then those that buy your products, whether it's investors in your company or customers, when they see that you're doing something and you have a green product or you have a product environmental description, which is soon gonna be labels on every product we make, these are the areas where you can be more sustainable and which is going to be the businesses of the future. It doesn't mean that we don't make money. It doesn't mean that we're gonna not use any fossil fuels but we're going to try to make things more renewable, less fossil fuels, more energy efficient and better for the environment. I'll let uh, Igor mention some of these incentives. Uh, I'm familiar with the energy performance contracts and basically if, you, if your business or building doesn't have the money to change, then there are people that will lend money to you in, and give it to a performance contractor who will put in the necessary equipment, make the changes in your boilers and your electrical panels, as long as the savings are used to pay back those loans. And there's a benefit to you and how it goes to your bottom line. So maybe uh, Igor, you might mention some of the issues around these uh, programs and what they might be in terms of, uh, you know, accelerated appreciation and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll, uh, for, first of all, uh, this is just a snapshot of uh, what's available. Uh, you know, in, in reality, there are uh, way more programs, but we just cannot fit all of them uh, into this presentation. So in, in different ways to, you know, to address your energy efficiency uh, issues. Um, so we'll start with uh, what's probably uh, what, uh, what all of us as, you know, individuals, if we own homes, uh, uh, we're waiting for the new interest-free loan uh, from Canada Mortgages and Housing Corporation. So that loan is uh, again funded by the federal government, but will be administered by uh, uh, CMCH. Yes, CMHC. CMHC, there we go. Uh, uh, it will be an interest-free loan for um, all sorts of energy upgrades uh, in your house. Uh, uh, we don't have the details yet, but uh, uh, most likely it will include you know, all those furnaces and air conditioning equipment, uh, replacing windows, uh, you know, adding insulations, uh, and then potentially even replacing your lights uh, uh, from the old to LED lights, if you haven't, if you haven't you know, transitioned to LED yet. Um, uh, we spoke uh, already briefly about uh, provincial, utility, provincial uh, utilities where you uh, get the uh, uh, rebates if it's if it's about um, all sort of electrical 
um, energy efficiency, it's a, a IESO, um, and then your local gas utility for everything related to, the, to, to, to gas. Um, uh, David spoke briefly about infrastructure bank, uh, one of the options too. Um, I'd say that probably for more of a larger projects, uh, uh, but uh, you know, David, you may have examples um, of small to medium sized businesses uh, taking advantage of the program, uh, by all means, let us know. Um, yeah, just let me clarify the 25 million is, is for the performance contract, but it could be somebody who has five smaller projects that are accumulated. Mm -hmm. Also, I just mentioned the, the one to 3% interest rate. If you are doing more fossil fuel saving, then you get the lower interest rate. So that's the incentive because it's a Canadian, you know, as opposed to a province. So uh, the ESCOs are the Energy Association, Energy Service Association of Canada that has mm -hmm. a website for those interested. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, perfect. Uh, then uh, what else is available? Uh, there's a number of uh, training and uh, hiring uh, type of funding that may be used uh, for uh, both, you know, educating your employees uh, in the better use of energy or even training and dedicated energy uh, uh, energy manager at your facility if it's large enough. Um, all sorts of training. The government doesn't dictate you what kind of training you should take. So uh, any type of training that uh, you know results in energy efficiency is definitely qualified. Um, uh, there is also um, a way to write off uh, your expenses on the energy efficiency equipment right away. That means that normally, uh, uh, until those changes, before those changes were introduced, uh, when you buy a piece of equipment, it doesn't matter what equipment, uh, if it's over a certain threshold, you, you have to, so you have to um, break down the costs uh, of that piece uh, and basically uh, depreciate it over the next uh, five or maybe even 10 years. However, uh, this requirement is now removed for certain energy efficiency pieces of equipment. Uh, and also there are some incentives for the manufacturers of those um, uh, of those uh, energy efficiency equipment. Uh, now, if you are buying a certain equipment, uh, you can write off the expenses right away in your first fiscal year and be done with it. I think that's a great uh, opportunity, uh, especially if there's no other incentive available for whatever reason for you. Uh, Going uh, closer to the you know, electric reality on the roads, uh, there are incentives to building for building uh, charging infrastructure in Canada. Um, if you own a facility and you want to put uh, a, a charger for electric vehicle in, 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 in your, at your parking spot, uh, there are programs and incentives for, incentives for you to do that. Um, and there are also uh, several programs with uh, National Research Council um, and um, uh, uh, SDTC, which stands for Sustainable Development uh, uh, Technology Canada, is an organization that handles um, government funding for developing all uh, new solutions that, re that, that results in uh, developing of new technologies that reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and also contribute to clear water, clear air, and clear soil. So uh, if uh, you are developing this type of technology, then you can use a combination of um, uh, uh, NRC, National Research Council, and, and, and SDTC funding programs uh, to develop your technology further. Great. So thank you very much. I'm uh, David Katz. As I said, you can see me on LinkedIn. You can... Uh, go to my website, put in your contact information, uh, connect with me, and we can do an assessment of what you're spending your money on, what is it for sustainability that you can do. I've been doing this for over 25 years, and so uh, I look forward to uh, participating closely with the FAIR grant and applications and those on the call with uh, opportunities to improve our businesses and our buildings. And with that, I'll turn it back to you. Is that right, Colin? 
Yes, yes. Thank you so much, David. That was was rather enlightening. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping before we go on, ladies and gentlemen. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and we will address those first when we get to the question and answer period. So now, without any further ado, I'm going to invite Igor to make his presentation. Igor. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, uh, I don't have slides uh, uh, today, but um, I just wanted to add uh, very briefly to what we've discussed. That uh, we have discussed uh, primarily uh, the grants uh, uh, and, and loans for uh, improvement, uh, your kind of energy improvements and energy efficiency. Uh, what I wanted to add to uh, those who are on on the call today that uh, there are also uh, government funds and grants for other types of uh, projects and other types of expenses. And uh, there are only few uh, of those uh, types of you know, eligible project expenses that you can um, uh, you know, incur. And uh, I'll just list it here for your information and then uh, let you know what to do with it. So uh, first and foremost, there are some grants and incentives for uh, purchasing equipment not related to energy efficiency, uh, rather related to the uh, efficiency of your operations, especially uh, for manufacturers and food and beverage uh, producers, uh, they will uh, take huge advantage of purchasing new equipment. Uh, skills training, it's another big category of mm -hmm. the grants uh, that are available. And uh, as I said, the government doesn't really dictate uh, who should take the training and what kind of training you, you should take. Um, there are some rules though, there are always some rules, but in general, um, you can train uh, your employees in pretty much any uh, imaginable training, uh, as long as it's reasonable. Uh, another uh, big category is uh, research and development. Uh, we briefly mentioned uh, sustainable development technology fund, um, uh, NRCRF program. Uh, there are also um, research and there's also research and development tax credit, which is a very popular program for research and development. Uh, and when we think about research and development, uh, we typically imagine, you know, like a university lab with, uh, you know, something bubbling around you. But uh, it doesn't have to. You don't have to be that scientific to qualify for research and development grant. Um, as a matter of fact, if you are developing a new product. Uh, and in, or in your process, you most likely qualify for one of those research and development incentives. Uh, now, the other category is uh, export business development. Uh, Canadian government wants uh, Canadian, more and more Canadian companies to uh, expand internationally, and that's why it supports uh, export marketing activities. Uh, traditionally, they supported uh, and provided grants for Canadians to participate in the trade shows, and go to the trade missions outside the country, but uh, you know, guess what? It's not available anymore. So the government instead uh, supports uh, all sorts of digital advertising that uh, uh, you can take, and they don't dictate you whether you should, you know, advertise on Google or on, or on Bing or on Facebook, whatever. Uh, it's your choice. Uh, it depends. Uh, it depends on where your clients are and how you can reach them. Um, the condition, though, is that you have to have um, an export market uh, in, in mind. You cannot use these funds to market yourself in Canada, but, uh, if, 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 but, but if your, uh, uh, your, your company eyes the international market, uh, that's fine. That's the program for you. And uh, last but not least, uh, my favorite is the business expansion funding. Um, if your uh, manufacturing agri-food or technology company is large enough that you are looking for ways to like literally physically expand um, and invest massively in um, uh, capital assets like equipment, um, there are certain incentives uh, both in Ontario and on a federal level for you to do that. Uh, in Ontario, for example, uh, if you are in certain areas outside Greater Toronto, uh, you can get up to 15% uh, of the grant uh, of your total expenses for your business expansion. Um, otherwise, uh, in Ontario, you can get 35% of your business expansion, expansion expenses as the interest-free loan. And the uh, interest-free loan uh, 
has its advantage advantages and first of all it's an interest free so you save a lot on interest uh, but also because it's a government loan um, it's also no collateral loan and no security loan and uh, it has a very um, uh, good repayment policy you don't have to i actually don't have to repay it until your project ends so those are uh, the examples of uh, uh, other funding programs that are available for businesses uh, uh, you know, in Ontario and in Canada. Uh, and uh, my uh, last uh, piece of advice is to uh, visit our website. And on our website, we have a contact page. And on that page, uh, you'll find an eligibility check form. So that eligibility check form is absolutely free to fill out. Uh, what's going to happen when you fill it out, uh, our team will review your situation. Uh, you will leave just, some, just some details about your business, uh, most importantly, where it's located, uh, how many employees do you have, and what's, what is it exactly that you want to use the funding for. So these are three pieces of information that will take you two minutes to fill the form, um, but it will give us enough information to determine what type, what specific government grants are available for you. And then uh, we can get back to you with that list and then you know, take it take it from there. Um, uh, we'll, we'll share the eligibility check list, check link uh, uh, when we send out uh, the slides and uh, the recording of the webinar, uh, but uh, uh, you can just go to our website, uh, fairgrantwriting.ca and hit on the contact uh, and you will have that form right there. And that was everything that I wanted to say, uh, the short, short pitch, uh, but our main subject today is uh, sustainability and energy efficiency. So I wanted to uh, open the floor to the questions as soon as possible. Okay, thank you, Igor. Um, I'm going to get a slide up in a moment, but just very quickly, Igor, there is a, a, a very nice question coming out. Our first question is what grants allocated for expanding the artificial and artificial intelligence analytics in manufacturing industry and business intelligence platforms to automate the measuring tools and analysis? Mm -hmm. um, that's a nice question. You go. Yeah, very, very nice question. So uh, this is what, uh, uh, what, what I think um, uh, many refer to as industry 4.0. So all sort of um, you know, technology solutions to like, literally teach pieces of equipment to talk to each other and then analyze uh, the performance. So all of that uh, falls under two buckets. And the first bucket is uh, skills training because whatever uh, system a company buys, uh, the company has to make sure that uh, all employees know how to use the system right and how to, uh, you know, interpret the results, interpret the metrics of the system. So there, is the, there are several grants uh, for skills training portion, but then uh, there's also a portion of um, uh, software slash implementation. Uh, this is a bit more complex subject uh, because um, for now, uh, there is no a government grant or loan that would apply uh, to like all Canadians for buying software. Uh, in the beginning, I mentioned uh, one program that we are waiting for, and this program is called Canada Digital Adoption Program. Uh, the program was promised in the federal budget, but it's not yet uh, you know, available for applications. So that program, will, we, we, we expect that that program would include some government uh, grants and loans for buying and implementing those types of systems. So we're waiting for that. Uh, while we're waiting for that, uh, depending on your industry, you might qualify for some uh, of the industry specific uh, programs. Um, uh, one of the industry specific programs is Canadian Agricultural Partnership. So if you are in an agri-food business, uh, say food and beverage manufacturing, um, you may qualify for buying this type of software and introducing this type of software in your facility. Okay, thank you, Igor. Um, David, for you, one of the things I've, I, that a lot of us, so I'm going to ask a layperson's question here. Um, I realize that some of our attendees might, um, they, they, they might think it a, a, a bit junior, but I'm, I'm a marketing person, not, a, not an engineer. We often hear the term um, energy audits. Now, 
coming from coming from my knowledge of things, we always used to be on on various cost saving initiatives, trying to save money, turn off lights, all sorts of things like that. But I get the I get the impression that an energy audit program is somewhat more involved than that. Could you shed a little light on that, please? Yeah, well, you see, as I said, you if you don't measure, you can't manage. So first you have to know what it is you're using. So an energy audit reviews your current use of energy and where it's applicable. Just getting your Toronto Hydro bill or your Enbridge bill doesn't tell you how much you use to make hot water and how much you use to heat your home. You have to look at those. We have tools that have weather regression capabilities. So there are three levels of audits, a class one, which is just show me your bills and show me your old light, then we can improve it with a new LED that you can get at Home Depot to a level two, which is what are you doing with regard to specifically each piece of equipment? So if you have an old furnace, do you know what the fan motor is? Is it a quarter horsepower, half horsepower? So generally we're able to look at the specifications of the equipment and that's a level two. And then we're able to clearly dissect where the energy is used. So we can see that if you change the motor in your furnace, and you used it for the heating and cooling season, how much it would save you before you put out the money for the new motor or before you even qualify for an incentive from the utility. Uh, the utilities don't just take it on, here's my bill, make it lower. They want an audit. And, and the word benchmarking is similarly used as to what is the, where are you using your energy? And, and that's a reporting requirement for all Ontario businesses and all buildings over 50,000 square feet where you have to benchmark your energy and your water and your gas, and you have to report it to the provincial government. And it's part of the whole green effort. And then level three audit and capital modification is now that we see what you're using, we can engineer and design new processes that get you off fossil fuels that maybe use electric uh, heating instead of gas heating. So those are the differences. So the word audit is not a, an accounting sort of term. It's more of a, an assessment. Does okay. that help you call it and those yes, on the call? <laughs> yes, it, it, I'm, I'm, I've, I certainly learned a little bit from that. Um, but what I want to do is jump from that question and over to Igor. Um, when, we, when we do all of these things, um, one of the questions we get asked frequently by our clients is about stacking of grants. Mm -hmm. Now, when we have situations like this, we're in the midst of doing a major company expansion and we're getting grants for training, we're getting grants for um, software, we're getting grants for construction. In the midst of this, a company wants to say at the same time, we're going to get, we want a, a energy um, conservation loan to be able to put in new LEDs, new this, new that. Um, will the rules of stacking permit adding something like this in addition to getting loans uh, sorry grants for mm -hmm. software training stuff like that yes uh, in general yes uh, because <clears throat> you know the the, the object uh, in many cases the object and eligible specific eligible expenses uh, within different programs they don't overlap so for example uh, yeah, you can use energy incentives to you know, change your lights at the plant, um, or you can use, say, a software grant for one of those energy management software systems to uh, to uh, implement. So, in other words, in this case, you don't even have a case for the stacking because you use two different programs for two different expenses. However, uh, in uh, in the summary air events, uh, the overlap could happen, and in this case, the stacking rule typically. It depends on the program, but typically it's between 50 to 75 percent. In other words, uh, in many cases, you can use multiple programs to pay for the same expenses, but only up to a certain limit. And limit is usually 50 percent, uh, in some cases, 75. Okay. And I would like to add my own part to that to say that um, when you are looking, ladies and gentlemen, at doing any sort of grant funding program for your business, please make sure to um, approach grant funding with an open mind. 
because while you might see that your expansion project is going to allow you to or going to require that you get your staff trained, there may be other parts to your project that could qualify for grant funding. Or indeed, if you are doing a particularly large group of projects, perhaps you could roll them up into one of the larger grant programs, which could end up with you getting a lot more support for your business. Now, at this point, I have basically opened the floor to everyone. I didn't, oh, so there is another question. I'm, I'm so sorry, Emil, I didn't see your question until now. So uh, let me, before I get to Emil's question, let me just say what, finish what I saying I have done. I have enabled everyone's mic. So at this point, you can unmute and ask any questions. But first I'd like to just address Emil's question and then I'll throw the floor open to you all. Um, David, Emil is asking you, how long would an energy audit report take for a manufacturing facility? Uh, thank you. Uh, it is very dependent on the size of the facility and its energy use. So in many cases, if you're manufacturing, like we went to an automotive plant that was making mufflers, we had to look at the welding machines, the, the paint line, and it's very dependent in a manufacturing as to where you're producing and what energy you're using to produce. Um, you know, I used to work for Johnson and Johnson and I saw them make baby shampoo and, you know, and band-aids, et cetera. So it's it, an audit and, and the opportunities is really tied to what is your energy consumption? What is your water consumption? And how can those be reduced without impacting your product? And uh, even in marketing, as I said, Hudson Bay just said to us, uh, you know, you're going to change the lights, but it won't light up the sweater and we don't, we are here to sell sweaters. So you have to be very <laughs> cautious as to what you're trying to save the energy to do. But usually if you see in a large manufacturing facility, big chimneys or big heat loss, those could be recovered and reused. We're looking at a circular economy now, and that's what sustainability does. But uh, obviously, Emil, I'm happy to work with you on, a, on opportunities that you might have. Thanks. I do have a question in the, in the chat. Um, I'll just pause a second to see if there is a question from the floor. All right. So I'll jump to the question in the chat. Um, Cheryl, this one is, sorry, I'm sorry, Igor, this one from Cheryl is for you. Um, is there a charge to the clients for our services, for your services at Fair Grant Writing? Uh, well, it depends uh, because uh, we always start with eligibility check, which is free of charge, uh, where we look at into the uh, in a particular situation or a particular business or organization that is looking for, for funding. And then uh, we can have a free uh, discussion uh, just to guide you uh, through what the options are. And then, uh, you know, it, it, of course, it's your choice uh, you can do it on your own, um, or you can go with a grant writing company like Fair Grant. Uh, in terms of the fees that uh, we charge for application writing um, and claim and report writing is also in our scope. Uh, basically, we offer three different um, uh, pricing options that can accommodate any uh, budget, uh, and the options are either flat fees um, or uh, contingency fees, i.e. percentage of the funding or a combination of both. So a bit of a, uh, upfront uh, money and then a uh, reduced uh, share of the government grant uh, when the grant is approved. All right, thank you, Igor. Um, so the floor is now open. If, if anyone has any questions they'd like to ask, please jump right on in. I'll, I'll just build sustainable resources management does a similar approach as uh, a fair mm -hmm. grant. So if, if we are giving you an assessment of, you know, this is where your money is, this is where your energy is being sent, spent, uh, we're happy to do that because we have the, uh, you know, benchmarking tool. But if we are required to apply to Toronto Hydro or Enbridge Gas for an incentive, we've done this for CSA, we've done it for condo buildings, we've done it for manufacturers, we either get paid a percentage of what we gain in incentives for you, or we do it similarly on a fee basis. And uh, generally my vote, my 
offer is if I can't save you much more than the money you're paying me, I will give you your money back. And we haven't given people's money back yet. So we're generally able to identify waste and show how they can be quickly saved. In the case where you don't have money to do the things that are needed, we're able to then go and approach those lenders that will finance those savings. And so it's not a, a grant, but it's a, you know, a loan. And there are companies that will put combined heat and power into your manufacturing and they'll basically put up all the money because they have the tax write-offs that Igor mentioned, but you will get the benefit in your condo or in your manufacturing of that cheaper energy that's done on your site. If that helps people, thank you. Okay. All right. Um, are there any more questions? All right. I do know, and I'll 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 ask Igor to correct me if I if I go wrong. Um, I do know that um, we had in our pre webinar discussion, we pointed out that there are some grants that the government has not yet fully fleshed out all of the mm -hmm. details for. So I'm going to ask you, um, if you, if you are already a recipient of Fair Grant Writing's newsletter, please keep an eye out for it, especially over the next, say, four to, four to six weeks, as we get more information on it, we will release the information there. And certainly, um, if you if you don't see it there, please feel free to reach out to myself or Igor or any other member of the Fair Grant Writing team that you can get hold of, and um, have us let you know what you need to know. All right. So with that, as we come to the end, I'm going to um, again offer the opportunity for any questions, comments, observations from the floor. I have one question. Yes, Frank. Go ahead, please. Yeah, question I have is, I want to know the, the grants we can get for manufacturing of uh, uh, um, gym equipment because the company we have, we do assembling and some small manufacturing of gym equipment and we are going to expand our company to be able to do full manufacturing in Canada. But uh, the things right now we are ch uh, in challenge is the uh, warehousing and location because we want to expand the location and need, need to build a warehouse. Um, plus we need some uh, machinery. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So w what I am looking to see if there is any specific fund for this mm -hmm. matter. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, Frank may ask uh, where your business currently is currently located, which part of... Uh, yeah, is it, we are in, in Innisfil. Innisfil, okay. Uh -huh. And Innisfil, if I'm not mistaken, is a Simcoe region. Okay, no, that's good, uh, because in your region, uh, actually, there are uh, certain grants uh, for expanding your business and operation. Uh, we'll, we, we can get one-on-one -on, -one, uh, on the call and figure out the details of uh, you know, all the fine print of the program, but in general, yes, uh, there is a grant uh, that uh, may be up to 15% of your uh, expansion costs, mm -hmm. uh, as well, uh, well, like if you are staying within, within Simcoe region or like within um, uh, Western Ontario. Uh, and then uh, on top of that, there is an, um, two options. One option being um, the uh, federal interest-free loan called business scale-up and productivity mm -hmm. and lastly a commercial loan uh, but with a guarantee from the government. Uh, Canada Small Business Financing Program uh, is the loan uh, that you can get from like, regular financial institutions but 85 percent of the amount of loan is guaranteed by the government. In case of something goes wrong uh, the government pays back 85 percent of the loan uh, back to the bank and uh, you only guarantee 15 percent okay so uh yeah. how is the process if you want to start this process or mm -hmm. get more information is it possible to send us or we can send you uh, one email and explain on the email exactly what i was talking yes and then you can, yeah. mm -hmm. 
Yeah, if you have the budget already, or at least you know some rough ideas what type of expenses will be included, um, uh, shoot me shoot, shoot, shoot me an email, and then uh, we'll call you back uh, and we'll discuss all of that. And okay. Yeah, yeah. I I, I already uh, have your email address. Uh, anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Uh, and another another business we have is very very close. Is is actually the same concept, but that is. Uh, Argo Nutrition, which is sports supplement manufacturing. <clears throat> right now, we do manufacturing, but we, we don't do it by our own manufacturer. We do only packaging here. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. but, then, but we have a plan to make this mm -hmm. production here. Yeah, right. okay, okay. Uh, and, uh, regarding this matter, do you think anything else you can do? Yeah, it's more or less the same programs. Uh, we just need to figure out, okay, whether these are two separate legal entities. If so, uh, there will be uh, same eligibility check rules that we need to apply to two uh, separate business entities. That's all. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, there's, the, it sounds like there's quite a bit for us to, to, to speak about, Frank. Um, so I have... Well, just if, if I may, Colin, just to add to Frank's comment and Igor's, when you expand and when you look at a facility, uh, it's an opportunity to get an energy retrofit at that time. Yes. Like that's part of that. Many people buy old buildings and they move in and they start and then they try to retrofit. Yeah. You know, then they look at. So just right. to let you know, there may be a possibility to help you in that regard. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, and that goes back to the point of of when you're when you're undertaking an expansion, um, take a step back and look at the big picture of what you're doing. There might be a tremendous lot of opportunities for grant financing and um, interest free loans from the government. All right, so I will throw it one more time to the audience and our panelists to see if there are any questions, comments, observations. Okay, and with that, unless somebody jumps in real quick, I will um, basically bring the, today's webinar to an end. I would like to thank um, Sustainable Resources Management, um, President um, David Katz and Igor Shigrin, um, Principal of Fair Grant Writing. I'd like to thank you both for your presentations this afternoon. I would especially like to thank our audience. It's been a pleasure hosting you and, uh, and addressing your questions. So thank you all very much and have a wonderful day.